Good evening and welcome to evening prayer for Friday the 24th of November. <clears throat> o God, make speed to save us, O Lord, make haste to help us. I will meditate on all your acts and ponder your mighty deeds. Your way, O God, is holy. Who is so great a God as our God? You are the God who works wonders and have declared your power among the peoples. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, as now, and shall be forever. Amen. Our psalm for tonight is Psalm 139, of which you just heard an organ rendition, um, improvisation. And this evening, Psalm 139 is reworded by the Reverend Tom Schumann. <clears throat> I've tried to hide from your searching gaze, love's delight. I've climbed mountains and burrowed deep into earth's caverns. I've fled to the farthest edges of my soul and longed to sail in my fears to the dark side of the moon. Wherever I go, you are waiting for me. Even in the dimmest corners of my heart, your light is able to find me. Lost, I am found. Afraid to speak of my sinfulness, you hear my stumbling words before I shape them in my mind. Unable to help myself, you redeem me through the gracious love of Jesus Christ, my Lord, my Saviour. In sorrow so deep we cannot find our way out, God cradles us in comfort. In moments so dark, we stumble over ourselves. God lights the way. In joy, which cascades into our souls, God fills us with healing. Even when we cannot see it, God's hope is all around us, surrounding us with peace and healing. Thanks be to God, we are forgiven. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. Our first reading is from Revelation, the book of Revelation, chapter 22, verses 6 to 13. And he said to me, These words are trustworthy and true. For the Lord, the God of the spirits of the prophets, has sent his angel to show his servants what must soon take place. See, I am coming soon. Blessed is the one who keeps the words of the prophecy of this book. I, John, am the one who heard and saw these things. And when I heard and saw them, I fell down to worship at the feet of the angel who showed them to me. But he said to me, You must not do that. I am a fellow servant with you and your comrades, the prophets, and with those who keep the words of this book. Worship God. And he said to me, Do not seal up the words of the prophecy of this book, for the time is near. Let the evildoer still do evil, and the filthy still be filthy, and the righteous still do right and the holy still be holy. See, I am coming soon. My reward is with me to repay according to everyone's work. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the first and the last, the beginning and the end. Glory to God. And we continue with the Gospel reading from Matthew 18, verses 10 to 20. Take care that you do not despise one of these little ones, for I tell you, in heaven their angels continually see the face of my Father in heaven. What do you think? If a shepherd has a hundred sheep and one of them has gone astray, does he not leave the ninety-nine on the mountains and go in search of the one that went astray? 
And if he finds it, truly I tell you, he rejoices over it more than over the ninety-nine that never went astray. So it is not the will of your Father in heaven that one of these little ones should get lost. If another member of the church sins against you, go and point out the fault when the two of you are alone. If the member listens to you, you have regained that one. But if you are not listened to, take one or two others along with you, so that every word may be confirmed by the evidence of two or three witnesses. If the member refuses to listen to them, tell it to the church. And if the offender refuses to listen even to the church, let such a one be to you as a Gentile and a tax collector. Truly I tell you, whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Again, truly I tell you, if two of you agree on earth about anything you ask, it will be done for you by my Father in heaven. For where two or three are gathered in my name, I am there among them. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I have just a very short thought on this, and that is that the church is very human. It is a community, and it is made up of ordinary people. And of course, there are always issues. And when there are issues, we are often convinced that it is the other person that has sinned. That the injustice is against you. Which of course it often isn't. But that aside, whoever the fault is, there is a dispute, an argument. My thought is that I would like to encourage all of us Churches, ministers, elders, members, that whenever conflict arises, then before talks commence, it is made absolutely sure that every single person involved is being taken care of. No matter whose side guilt or justice is on, every single person should feel safe and secure in whatever comes next. Because we just read, and I thought that was rather harsh, we just read, um, if the member refuses to listen to them, tell it to the church, and even if the offender refuses to listen to the church, let such an one be to you as a Gentile and a tax collector. That means not one of you, someone outside. And to that I would just like to say, Jesus loved Gentiles and tax collectors and the one sheep that strayed away. He loved them as much as his followers. Let it be so. Amen. The music that we are going to listen to uh, is sung by Laudate Mennonite Ensemble and it's called O oh Love That Will Not Let Me Go.
Let us pray. I will pray a prayer from the book Sometimes Our Faith Wobbled, which is a collection of texts by Tom Schumann. I'm not quite sure if you can see that. I have to see myself in the... Right, let's have a look. Right, like this. So this is... Um, Actually, the evening canticle 20. Let us pray. Now, at the end of this day, remind us of how you have been listening to us. Every moment, wrapping your arms of grace tight around us, your mercy flowed like a gentle river, calming our fears. You held us up whenever we were about to fall flat on our faith. You rejoiced when we made justice our offering to you. You gave us not what we thought we wanted, but what we needed. Love instead of lust. Hope instead of hubris. Peace instead of panic. Grace instead of grumbles. And we dance in circles, holding hands with our siblings. Over and over we discover that you watch over us even when we become distracted. You whisper wonder to us, you pull us away from all the sails on temptation so we might share laughter and joy with those who long for new life. And in our prayers of intercession, let us pray tonight. Let us pray firstly. Because I read this on, on the URC Facebook, a tragic thing. We pray for the Reverends Camilla Veitch and Mark Rogers. They are ministers of Shrewsbury URC. As they provide a welcoming space at the church for students who are mourning the tragic loss of four of their friends from the town who died on a camping trip to North Wales. The four teenagers were studying for their A-levels at Shrewsbury College, of which its English Bridge campus is opposite the minister's church. Camilla and Mark have only been in post since August and we pray that they find the strength they need in the Lord to support their community. Of course, our thoughts and prayers also go to the family and friends of the teenagers at this difficult time. And in this cycle of prayer tonight, we pray for the ministers, elders and members of our churches in Nottinghamshire. Grant them wisdom and strength. And we also pray for a peaceful resolution to the situation between the occupied Palestinian ter territory and Israel. And there was cause for joy today as we saw on the news that hostages were being freed and returned to their families from both sides.
and we pray with Celia for her grandson Alfie, who is expected to undergo surgery next week, actually, the 27th. <clears throat> and we pray with the Reverend Daryl Root for Peter, her husband, for courage and strength and peace and healing. For the Reverend Helen Wakefield Carr for recovery from cancer surgery and strength for ongoing treatments. For the Reverend Hamish Temple. We pray for Jean Schenk and for the Reverend Brian Schenk in his care and concern for her. We pray for the Reverend Graham and Vera Moskery. We pray for Moina Hobart's parish priest, Father Andy. We pray for Barbara Turner, recovering from a fall. We pray for Janet Clarkson as she recovers from her stroke. With Claire and Abby Spencer for Chris who has cancer and is having specialist treatment to shrink the tumours. Pray with me for my friend Bea and for my friend Madeleine, both struggling with illnesses. <clears throat> with the Reverend Claire and Reverend Brian Davison for Susie, their daughter. For Cheryl and for Prince and the family in their ongoing care for her. With Andy for Mike, his dad, and for Liz and Ruth in their ongoing care of him. For John and for Irene as she continues to look after him. We also pray with those who grieve. For those who grieve for Jean Davison, especially her son, Reverend Brian Davison and the family. For those who grieve for Norma Bradshaw, widow of the Reverend Tony Bradshaw, especially the members of her family and our church at Manningborough. We pray for those who grieve for Reverend Cecil McCauley, especially Pat, his wife. And we pray for those who grieve for Don Buxton, especially the Reverend Maureen Buxton. For all who grieve the passing of loved ones. And in our church next Sunday, tomorrow, uh, no, not tomorrow, day after, Sunday, um, we have our, in Holland, our Remembered Sunday and we will light candles in the church service for all those who have died in the last year. In the love of God let us complete our evening sacrifice of praise and you may join me when I say we pray to the Lord, for the unity and peace of the Holy Church of God throughout the world, we pray to the Lord. For the peace and stability of all peoples and for those in authority, we pray to the Lord. For our own country and its national life, and all the countries from where we pray. And for all who live among us, we pray to the Lord. <clears throat> for a blessing on our homes, for our relations and friends and all whom we love, we pray to the Lord. For the sick and the suffering and for all who minister to their needs, we pray to the Lord. And for all who sleep in Christ, that Christ will remember them in his heavenly kingdom, we pray to the Lord. Lead us through the night to a new day. We praise you, Father, Son and Holy Spirit, and thank you that we may ask all this in freedom. Amen. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. And I switched the music, so I'm now confused. Let me go right back. Yes. Um, 
It's the 24th of November and two days ago it was St. Cecilia's Day. And for St. Cecilia I found some music. Hallelujah, voices raise. Lord bless us and keep us in his grace and give us peace. Amen. Good night. <laughs>